Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, your YouTube shop teacher, and I think you can guess what the subject of this video is, and yes, it's about some older Sterrett tools. Now the reason I'm making this video is to show off a few tools that I will soon be selling here on eBay, and then I won't be able to talk of them about them anymore. But I've just got so many tools here in stock, and some are kind of obscure and they don't make any more. Probably nothing that's terribly rare, but I'd like to go over some of the Stera tools that I have, talk just briefly about them, and uh, maybe some of this will be new to you, and I hope it is. We have a lot of Sterrett lovers out there. I like to keep a few old Sterrett tool catalogs on hand, and I have a few that are about this vintage, which is 1935. And you can see as time went by the catalog got thicker and thicker and thicker and then at some point here, this is the most recent catalog, I'm not sure when they came out with this edition, but they went to the regular 8.5 by 11 or whatever, standard size rather than the smaller ones that the machinists could keep right in their own tool chests. Of course in the older catalogs, and many of them were printed with the supplier or the distributor's name right on the front. This was Springfield, Massachusetts. But in the newer catalogs they are featuring many many of the electronic tools and that's the way it goes but I'm still surprised at how many uh, traditional tools are still in this catalog and I'm so glad of it. I'm deducing that at some point they got new management there at Sterrett and he was looking through some of the older catalogs. This one's from, uh, what, 99? That's my brother's handwriting. And he said, boy, these are blah looking catalogs. It's all black and white. Who's going to read that? So look at the difference now in uh, this catalog. And this was sent up to me uh, by Kevin Toppenberg, and he got it at uh, Fabtech. But look at the beautiful colored picture. Matter of fact, every page is in color. And you can order one of these from Sterrett if you're in the mood. And, you know, they got young, well, that guy's not all that young, but uh, they're advertising, well, what is it here? So some of their products I don't even recognize. And they make special gauging that is used in certain industries, probably on, uh, on special order. And you're going to see... Uh, women in here and uh, well, I'll, I'll see if I can find some of those pictures and uh, and people of different ethnicities. Oh there we got a woman doing a little gauging and of course she's a pretty woman. They don't mind putting an ugly man in <laughs> but they like to put pretty women in. But my point is that there's just an awful lot of electronic tools nowadays and why wouldn't there be if they didn't supply these and produce them they would be quickly out of business get that catalog I'll refer to that a few times during this video some of these tools I either have duplicates or I have never used them in all the years that I had them but this is a pretty little tool and it's got that nice case hardening and it's called a rule clamp and why in the world, I was thinking, would anybody want to uh, connect two rulers together end to end? You're going to introduce error, and I can't imagine it being very rigid. Well, then I read through this, a little description there, and I realized that not everybody has room in their toolbox. Matter of fact, nobody has a two-foot toolbox that would accommodate this long ruler. So how are you going to secure it at night? Well, you don't use one that long very often, so you would uh, put two of your rulers together to give you that extra length. Now, do you remember, well, I think it happened at my meet and greet, that I had a six-foot stair ruler, which was possibly even heavier than, than this, and it was six foot long. The only problem is someone had cut it in half at one time, so now there was two three-footers. I, I finally uh, had it kicking around here, so... For so long, uh, I sold it and somebody, now I wish I still had it. Let me put this together and see what it looks like. I've never done that. Well, there it is, but it, it feels like it would lack a little rigidity, but I put a one foot connected to the two foot, so now I have a yardstick, and that's what it looks like on the back side. 
Well, this is an attachment for a combination square. So if you need a real long square, or large square, I should say, you know, there's a 24-inch Lufkin rule. This is a half breed now. It's half Lufkin and half Sterrett. Notice that this takes a narrower ruler. The regular one inch wide will not quite fit in there. But this would have a lot of possibilities. Let me show you another possibility. Although I've never used it. I take back what I said about this not accommodating the regular uh, stir rule. It does. But look at the possibilities here. We got a square head. You could, of course, put your protractor head on there. Just a lot, lot of different things, I suppose, that you could do with this. Depends on your own creativity. Different length rules. And this is what it looks like in the catalog. I don't think the Sterrett will mind me using their catalog here in a video. Matter of fact, they should be glad. If, if they object, I'll take it down, of course. Okay, these are key seat clamps. Let me show you how they're used, but notice this is not a matched pair. This is a brown and sharp, and this is a sterret. I, I got one of each for some reason, but they clamp onto a ruler, whatever length that you want, and you would lay these onto a piece of round stock like this, and then you could, you could mark the stock, scribe it, or whatever you need to do, whatever operation. Pretty slick. Just take, I, got, I need an extra hand here, but you'd, you'd scribe like this. Let me show you the picture in the book. It's really better than what I'm doing here. There they are on the catalog, and here's another pair of them. They are not stared. I don't know what they are. And they do not fit on the stare-at ruler. The slot is too narrow. Everyone knows what small hole gauges are, and this is a typical pair here, not a complete set. But Sterrett also makes a set that is flat on the end, and those are great for measuring the diameter of a hole. You want to reach way down to the bottom of a hole that has a flat bottom, or they can be used in a slot to check the, the width of a rather narrow slot for in a set. And in addition to the longer ones I just showed you, here's a, a real short set of the small hole gauges that will go to the bottom. Looks like a man with a flat top, don't they? And there's a complete set. They show a lot of different sets of small hole gauges and telescoping gauges in their catalogs. This is a Sterrett number 459 cutter clearance gauge. I've actually never used it. That's why I'm selling it. I think I've seen Steve Summers use one of these. Quite an intricate instrument used for measuring the angles on milling cutters such as this. Because there's several angles on the end. Here. There's a clearance angle and, a, and then another relief angle. Forgot what they call that. But here are some other uses of it shown in the catalog. I think everybody knows that Sterrett made two different kinds of protractor heads. They probably have other ones as well. This one, notice that the blade comes off to the side, and then the other one is called the reversible. And the blade comes out of the middle of the base. I'm still not sure why they call it reversible, but you still have to flip it over to read it, I guess. The number 815 Toolmaker's Hammer has a built-in magnifying glass. You won't see these very often in your travels. This is not even a genuine stair, but I'm showing it to you anyway. My neighbor, Richard, who was kind enough to supply a bunch of these that were given away at my meet and greet. So this is, is shown here really as a, a gunsmith tool. But you can look at your little layout lines and then pick up your punch and tap it. So that's that's what that is. I do not have a genuine... Most everyone in the civilized world is used to seeing these Sterrett 
uh, wire gauges and sheet metal gauges and they just make a wide wide variety of them uh, in the different types of gauges depending on the, the kind of metal or whatever but perhaps you won't see the real little one very often which is made for measuring music wire which I call piano wire so there on the gauge that's uh, gauge number nine I'm not going to take the time to to check it out but I assume that there's a number nine on here Assume nothing, they tell me. Everyone has seen the little fish tails, center gauges, but this particular one's a little bit different in that it is for the Whitworth thread, 55 degrees. But at first glance, it doesn't look any different, but it is marked appropriately. You've seen me use this in many, many of my videos on threading. It's the number 392 fishtail uh, attachment, center gauge attachment. There's a little bit of a spring in there. I showed how to make one of these one time too, didn't I? And your center gauge will slide in there. And the little V-way here fits up against your work, and that's to be used in that manner as you're adjusting your tool. Just a little bit easier to hang on to than to try to hold this up against the work. But I was told in one of my videos by people, I've never seen one of those, and you won't see them very often. And at the high school I had a heck of a, of a time keeping track of these. They would get separated and I suppose thrown away. This is the number 52 rule holder. I just had to have this, and I've owned this less than a year, it's probably a pretty old one because that looks like Japaning on there, but it will hold a wide variety of rulers in different uh, widths. You can see how wide this is. Back it off a little bit and it could be used on a surface plate and in conjunction with a surface gauge as shown in the picture. It could also be used as a depth gauge. Heavy duty. It's really pretty neat, although I must confess that I've never used it. Sterrett makes several different designs of taper gauges, and contrary to what you might think, taper gauges are not used to measure tapers. They are a tapered tool. In this case, the number, what is it, uh, 270, is used to check bearing clearances. Well, there's a lot of different uses for it, but typically it could be used if this would be kind of a hard uh, slot to measure the size of. There are different ways of doing it, but if we would put the gauge in there, you could quickly see that on this side, I got to put my glasses on, that it's about, it's 55 thousandths wide. And if we flip it over, we have a metric. Uh, measurement. So that's a pretty neat deal. Here's the number 267 taper gauge and it will measure holes and tubing and things like that between uh, 1 16th of an inch and 1 and a 16th uh, diameter and it's used in this manner. For instance these holes here. We'd find one that would fit in appropriately like that and uh, take our measurement. Now why would you do that <laughs> instead of a, <laughs> of a caliper or something? I don't know, but they still have them in the new catalog. But this would be pretty handy in a shop where there's a lot of tubing in that. You could hold that, put that in your pocket, it would fit even your shirt pocket and uh, check diameters, internal diameters of tubing. Now here's yet another set of taper gauges, and in this little pouch there are two different ones, uh, A and B. Let's see, number... Can you read it there? I can't see that. Maybe I can see this one. 269A and the other one is B. Very similar to the other one that I showed you, only they're shorter, quite a bit shorter, and could be used well, the other one can be used for small holes too, but 
So there's quite a few leaves that offhand they almost look like feeler gauges, but they most certainly aren't. I think they're kind of pricey if you have to buy them. That would go in that very small hole. And supposedly these are very, very accurate. I've always loved the number 129 bench block. Can be used for driving out pins, layout, center punching, hollow in the back, nicely knurled and hardened. That's just a nice size. Now this is not a steric. I don't know who made this. There's no name on it. But it is commercially made and similar but just a different size. Now I'm sorry if I have from time to time said Stanley as I'm going through this video instead of Sterrett. Sterrett makes a vast array of calipers inside, outside, uh, large, small and so on. But I bet you've never seen one like this and at first glance you might think well somebody just uh, heated it up pounded it straight. But no, that's called a keyhole calipers and I never have used it and it only cost a dollar five cents if you want to order one for a three incher. Not sure of the exact purpose. I suppose you could stick this in a hole and and, and measure uh, tubing or something like that. And here's a threading. I used to have one of these threading uh, calipers or thread calipers. Do not have one to show you. And the ever popular hermaphrodite caliper. This is kind of a large one and it has the bent leg. They made quite a variety of these as well. Something you won't find at Walmart. As compared to a straight leg caliper of another manufacturer. The number 118 spacing center punch is something you won't see real often. But there's an example of it. adjustable and this particular point here is spring-loaded. To me they don't work very well in that as you punch a series of holes you accumulate the error but for rough punching perhaps holes three-eighths apart I think it would be satisfactory. Here's a beautiful stair tool. I cannot, there is no number on it. I blew this way, way up by looking into the monitor and it just says stair at Ethel, Massachusetts. I think there are other attachments that go with this. There would probably be a straight leg, but as far as I can tell, it's, it's simply a dividers. And the cone shape uh, end here could fit into uh, a hole. It would find the center of that hole and Look at how magnificently this is made with a little micro adjustment here. And this one's in remarkably good shape. I've never seen another one. Don't remember where I got it, but I think it's very old. I don't believe it's in the newer catalogs. Let me know if you know what this is called. Put it in the comments. They made a wide variety of scribers that looked like this, different sizes. They made screwdrivers that looked something like this, but they had a swiveling head for jewelers. And pin uh, vices in, in complete sets. Some of them were double-ended for holding real small work. Pretty nice little devices. But I think perhaps Stanley Sterrett, rather, is most famous for its squares. And if you get a chance, make sure you buy the, the hardened head like this rather than the cast one. The kids would drop them drop them at the high school, the cast ones, and they would break. These are hardened. Well, they would break anything, so it didn't matter. <laughs> Always with a little scriber. I've told the story many times about the scribers at the high school, so I won't repeat that. And be sure and get the satin chrome, if possible. And always buy, well, at least I prefer, the for our graduation, but there are a wide variety of graduations available. And I think I've also told you the story about a student asking me if we had any 12 inch rulers. She said, every ruler I look at in the cabinet is an 11 inch. Why, are, why don't we have 12 inchers? 
This is a cute little one, a four incher. Now that's a cast head, that's not a hardened one, with the center finder, but they don't have a protractor. In the larger size, you know, the complete set included the center head, the protractor, and the square head. But that's one of my favorites. It's a, it's a cutie. Now this particular one, still in the box, probably not that old, is called a double square, and it came with extra blades. This blade being, well, it tells on there the angle, and there's all kinds of information there. Cutting angles of a drill, a little bit tarnished there. I haven't ever used those blades. And this blade is for an octagon on that end and a hexagon on this end. And I have a uh, square like this, which again they call a double square in a smaller size here. Well, here it is. With, with a different blade in it that was my dad's. That's one of the very few tools that I still own that was let me grab it here. My dad's. He didn't have all that many tools, although it seemed like a lot when I was a child, but a lot of them were carpentry tools. He held a carpenter's uh, union card and worked that way in the summer on, a, on the hospital and other various really hot jobs in the summer. I remember that. And this is a very recent acquisition of mine, this little die maker square. And I've got other die maker squares as well, but this one uh, has the the little protractor right on it going up to 10 degrees. That's really a nice one. It's just in perfect condition given to me by Michael out of New Jersey. And here's a little fixed head square. I've only had this fairly recent as well. But if you look through the catalog you're going to find pages and pages of squares. Well that pretty much covers the Stera tools that I wanted to show you. I think everything else you've seen and uh, actually that's pretty much the sum total of what I have and uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to show you some of those things before I sell off all my duplicates or the specialized ones that I I no longer use. So this is Tubal Kane saying thank you so much for watching my channel and my videos and I'll see you soon.